All right, I think we can get started. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, everybody, and welcome to this uh, wonderful community meeting where we have a big um, item to celebrate. And this is the release of Istio 1.0. Yay, yay, yay. So uh, <laughs> it's time to cheer, be happy. And uh, frankly, I want to thank everybody for, for their contribution because this, is, was, this was an amazing like community effort. And, collaboration and contributions from everybody in this working group and all the other working groups. So this is really amazing. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so I hope everybody had some champagne or something to celebrate. We did <laughs> champagne and beer and other things that should go off the record though. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, please add your name to the attendees list if you haven't done so. And I guess we'll um, uh, jump straight into the second item now of the agenda, which is the discussing virtual serving, uh, service delegation proposal. And that's uh, Niraj. Niraj, are you uh, in the meeting? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So uh, can you please share the document or you would like me to share it? Uh, you can share it. That's fine. I, I think it's actually if you share it and you want to scroll also, it will be easier maybe to... I see. All okay. right. So I guess I need to be the presenter then? Uh, yeah, I think it's... Um, so from the meeting, there is there must be a button to present or something. Let's right. see. Uh, okay. Did you find it? Yes, I think so. Okay, Let's good. See. Yeah, and uh, we'll have a, more items on the agenda. So um, we'll probably cover this for about 20 minutes. I think that's fair. Let me know if you need more time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll discuss the upcoming big work items. And uh, one of them is the scaling of the endpoints. And Costin will cover this. And I see somebody else added the Istio pod network controller. So I think if we do 20 mm -hmm. minutes, 20, and maybe we have uh, uh, maybe <coughs> 10 minutes in the end left for, okay. for the last item, I think. We'll see how it goes. All right. So I'm still having a problem sharing. Uh, can you just right. go ahead and share? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sure. It's it. actually here. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, can I? Should I begin? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I am Neeraj. Uh, I work for Aspen Mesh. I had initially sent out a question regarding uh, how can one virtual service refer to other virtual services rather than just to destination clusters as the current spec is so that we can have more composable resources which can allow different virtual services to be chained together and it can give ownership semantics to various application teams which are developing their applications they can write routes for those services and other services can other virtual services can refer to them uh, when they want that routing functionality rather than incorporating all the routes in a single document. Mm -hmm. So I think after sending the doc, I received, after sending the email, uh, I received some feedback from Louis and Sriram, and I thought it might be worth uh, writing an RFE and getting that discussion going again, since 1.0 is out. So this is the doc which explains the various goals. Uh, at the top level, uh, if you scroll a little further down, Andre, uh, and so <laughs> these are the challenges that I see in the current document. Uh, basically, there are three challenges. Uh, the virtual service resource can continuously keep on growing if you have a large number of nested sub routes for each sub path matching. And additionally, if you have a lot of matches on, the, on a regex or on a, a wildcard host, again, your virtual service resource can become enormous. And as it grows, the operational complexity is huge. So this, doc, this RFE aims to solve that problem. Additionally, there is a very weak ownership semantics in the current uh, virtual service spec. I'm hoping uh, this design solves that issue too. And the last thing is, in Kubernetes, if you have uh, namespace-based ownerships or namespace-based RBAC policies, at least in my mind, there is no clear way to have a similar uh, behavior in, in the current Istio virtual service spec. 
Right. Yeah. All right. So with that, uh, I mean, I'm, the document basically goes through a simple example to illustrate what the problem is. The example is in this, where you have two virtual services, Foo VS and Bar VS. Foo VS is for the Foo uh, service in Team One namespace. It's currently because the virtual service route destination has to be a cluster. It has to refer to the host Bar Team Two directly. As 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 you're doing this, you are automatically skipping over all the routes which are defined in the Bar VS. So in the current document, in the current resource, one way to do that will be to merge all of them together, as I say in the uh, table below. If you can scroll down. Okay, can, can you explain a bit what uh, what is the problem? Uh, I'm, okay. I'm a bit confused. Thank you. Sure. Uh, yeah. So if you want to incorporate all the route rules for bar VS virtual service in the full virtual a full VS virtual service, you will have to merge them manually. So this is the merge route. Where Can you give a less abstract okay. example of, of when this problem shows up? I'm, I'm having a... Sorry, go, go on. Can, can you give a less abstract example, like without foos and bars and bases? Like, when, when does this problem show up, and, and what, are, what are you trying to do? Uh, so the, this problem shows up when you have one virtual service, which has a bunch of matches and it wants to route to another destination. But there are there's another set of virtual service resources which have been defined for those destinations. But sorry, uh, is that, is that, is that, well, I, th I think the, 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 the crux there really is that you have you have a single host name and within a subsection of that host name's namespace, like a path, the ownership of all these services, and there may be many that mapped into that portion of the namespace are owned by one distinct organization than another. Sure. Right. So let's say you're Google.com, right? Google has Gmail and you have, I don't know, Play. Yes. Right. And so Google.com slash Gmail is owned by a massive organization, and Google.com slash Play is owned by a massive organization. And they don't really need to know about each other's config. Yes. Is this the case of a monolith? Because you said you have two different services. Do they point to the same destination no. service? It doesn't. Well, it's, no? it's, it's one virtual host pointed to two different yeah. okay. like namespaces of. Oh, okay, so they they are separate. Yeah, that's yes. the, so the problem. Is the virtual services let you manage hosts, but yes. many organizations manage paths under a host. Yes, absolutely. Or, or some other so, division. Right? Or some things. other division altogether. Yeah. That, that, that's important I mean, uh, because the, we, we had this discussion about ingress as well, and, and, and uh, there was a very big debate about how far should we go with merging stuff. Because this example where you take header matching and everything else becomes very, very complicated both to implement and to understand by the user. If the use case is not only, uh, you know, basically you have a prefix, I mean, you have the, the domain namespace, and you want to also want to add the prefix basically to say that Gmail goes to some other domain and so forth. That's perfectly reasonable and, and easy to understand and, and you know the use case is clear. But when we go into if it has a header foo, okay, who owns a header foo? I mean how do you know that that you need to merge or or, or uh, because it's 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 right so I mean this this is one of the intrinsic problems with HTTP, right? I mean you can end up in these weird permutation cases because well the URI structure is strictly hierarchically namespaced people do tend to route on things that are outside of that. For instance, you say, maybe, like I have an experiment flag in a header. Sure. And, and that goes to an exactly. entirely different suite of services. Sure. And, 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 and I'm happy if we have a limited list of things right. we march on, I'm happy. When it gets arbitrary, then it's hard for everyone, basically. Right. Well, and like <laughs> I wrote the doc about, like there are certain classes of merging that we can do relatively easily. Exactly. Right. But I actually, I, I'm not convinced that merging is really what we want. Uh, Andrew, can you scroll back up to that first example? I actually think that it would yeah. be pretty nice if this just worked correctly, where when I match on where the left side routes over to the virtual service on the right side. Exactly. That's the aim, or that's the aim of this proposal. But what does it mean, Busy? I mean, what, what does it mean if you if you match a header? You apply all the rules. I mean, there, there, there may be rules that match other headers there, and maybe rules that match the header. Right, but it's ordered. Right, in, right. So, it's as ordered as well. so it has to be a DAG, right? It has to be directed. Exactly. Otherwise, it cannot be resolved. Right. So you do the first match. You say you wind up at the second service. 
then you only apply second surface rules. And is this is a point where 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 I uh, want to mention scalability and and all this ordered list of matches that may right. So we need we still need Envoy to be able to do. Right? Yes. Effectively, what we're now saying is there's a there's a synthetic match construct which is yeah. when it's header exact bar and whatever else is happening in the sublist. So yeah, that's effectively we would have to merge the virtual services in pilot. And, and, exactly. and, and no, 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 no. It's not even clear. We can merge it in pilot, and it's not clear how it can be, you know, made to scale. Yeah. Because yeah, I, in the end, what we want is we, we let's let's move to, to the other side. I mean, from Envoy, you have a virtual host that's easy to match, and in the virtual host, you need to apply a large number of rules because if if we are in a large organization, you may have prefix matches and so forth. This at some point needs to be optimized so it can scale to large numbers. Right. So we have to, do... At some point, you have to take that the ordered list and try and synthesize a tree out of it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Which and is possible. It is possible. And Envoy doesn't want to do it. But but that's done. just so much complexity for something that you can actually automate at the control plane or at the GitOps level, right? It's like I mean, this is yes, it's a problem. But like, imagine you build something else on top of whatever we have that actually offers this abstraction where you know you have a UI or something that says like here is a something delegated thing, and then somebody else comes and overrides it. They all go through one common. Right, 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 sure, I mean, we can do whatever the hell we want in Pilot, but Envoy still does the dispatch yeah. based on a flat list. Oh, yeah, so I agree. Help. No, I agree. But I'm saying that this, I mean, is, rather than trying to make a hierarchical list with an Envoy, this is something you can actually handle very easily with an additional layer on top, not directly as a YAML thing that interacts with Pilot. But you know, you have a build an additional layer, stick a database in, and that thing automatically takes and merges and well, creates this thing. And you know, well, I think there's, there's two different issues. Like, I think we know how to make Pilot. Like if, if we want to do a, a delegation thing to another declaration for the same domain, that's fine. We can make that work, right? It's, the, well, the configuration aspect of it's not hard. Well, well there's, there's a separate issue. We'll talk about the access management stuff. And then there's all Pilot can do is flatten that down, right, into just an ordered list by basically treating everything as a conjunction. Yes. And then all yeah, but the it's no, it, it, it doesn't actually. I thought through the whole thing. The ordered list stuff is not really that easy because, like, when you Take a service and you want to get the list of all virtual services that apply to it. You're now going to have two or three matches one which has a wildcard, such as the asterisk or local, and then another which has an exact specific match. And then there's something else that comes in between. And then you have to take all of them, combine and merge them. And this is where the match conditions start getting complicated because if you have a regex on top and then, like, you know, somebody else has a more specific path in the bottom, you're going to have to do this regex matching according to how Anway would do regex matching, ECMA scripting. That means you have to import the JavaScript regex parser within this and apply because I mean people would probably have like you know some foo.com slash department one slash something else. And you know that then people would say, like, I just want to delegate it slash department one goes to this virtual service where they can do whatever the hell they want. And that's where all this problem started with ingress. Right, but I mean sure, I'm trying to trying to explain to people that we're gonna reorder something, right? Or, or like the difficulty we're going to have is invalidation, right? Because you're going to have route occlusion, right? But trying to tell people that doing anything other than order dispatch, and then we'll say that somehow magically we can make order dispatch tree-based dispatch, sure, but we shouldn't present anything other than order dispatch in the, the interface. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard for people to understand the API. I yeah. totally agree, and that's why this is an order dispatch, right? No, yeah, but but we're still using the same virtual service where if I as a user start writing this, the first thing I would end up doing is like create prefix matches and then do a by route destination goes yeah. to some foobar service. And then I'll tell him those those guys know that their their chunk is under slash foobar uh, prefix. And then from there, they create additional prefixes and regexes and so on and so forth. So what yeah. we can do instead is have a different construct, completely different construct. That, uh, that has same or limited semantics of virtual service, which simply says host match and delegations. And you know some features that we know can actually be chained. Like you know the header matches can actually be all appended together, but nothing in path, nothing in prefix, nothing else. Just host match and probably the source label match, or not even source label match, actually. I mean, yeah. Well, oh, but that doesn't address the primary use case, which is path-based routing, right? Like path-based that's, routing that's applies primary. only at the lowest end of the chain. I mean, you can't do path-based routing on the top and expect it to work in the bottom as well, right? So, so, oh, so but that's the primary user pain point, though. And, and that can be addressed very easily. I mean, for, for the, for the path-based, we can just extend things instead of host being just host name, we can say host plus path. 
and then we can we can treat host plus or plus prefix as kind of the uh, you mean here uniqueness you mean host? yeah right. or, or you can just simply say that you're a delegate right yeah, yeah. or yeah. we can say it's a delegate but but uh, my, my my main concern for scalability is that uh you know doing three i mean uh, non-ordered is the only option to scale uh, and void to a large number of, of virtual services and pods. Yeah, so the, the, there's no argument accept, that Envoy, no, we need Envoy to get better. They will need to get better, but if we impose constraints on them saying that, hey, you need to do regexes at the beginning and do, it, you kill any opportunity for them to get better. So, so can, a, quite, a question related to that scalability, couldn't this be solved by just running multiple meshes on the same cluster? Uh, or, or is there a requirement that dumps the complexity into something else, right? I mean, this, this is effect. I mean, the simplest and the most dumbest way, if you give me like one week to solve this, I would just simply have a very simple MySQL database and a simple UI where somebody goes and enters the rules as a, a top level rule, and then somebody goes and enters a, a more specific delegated rule. And I would just use a bunch of scripts to like generate the spit out the, the, the complete rule. Yeah, but yeah. the other ways of solving this is like, as you that you can actually have delegation, you can actually push this to Envoy, some pieces of it can be pushed to Envoy and so on. To get what I was, here, which funny is exactly what we are doing, I mean, Google is doing. Yes, and but what I was trying to say is that rather than, try, I mean, so, but if there is a dire need for something that's not like, you know, you can just not with scripts and databases and so on, but rather you want to create a full, full scale API, I think, then create a separate construct called delegated, I mean, like, you know, virtual service parent, whatever it is, some foobar virtual service, that's like a new API construct, which has like sort of all hosts that would match. And that's the only thing where the delegation is set. And it has a very limited set of constructs. It doesn't have everything that virtual service has. And we have to yield in some point. We, we have to drop the pathways matches stuff. And we simply have to do, we can only allow like header matches because these things will just simply get appended. And I think no, more. But again, we, 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 I like don't think the, the primary use case is path-based matches, right? I mean, primary oh. use case is more like, I'll just say, I want to define a top level thing where I want to add a few set of headers for everything else. And then, and no, then I want to like- No, 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 no,
Yeah, I totally agree with Louis, but I think that can be dealt separately rather than on this proposal. The idea here is, in my mind at least, the mental model is every service in your cluster, ideally, you can think of it has a reverse proxy in front of it, which is doing all the routing for sure, you. Sure, yeah. And, no, the the and, issue I have, and, and I do think these need to be solved together to some degree. Okay. Right? If we define an ackling system that says this namespace owns, you know, startup, you know, yahoo.com, mm -hmm. and then you want to delegate to a virtual service declaration in another namespace, right? Mm -hmm. Then how does the ackling system work with that declaration? Uh, right? I, what are the expectations around the ability to edit it? What kind of declaration must occur in the API? Yeah, and priority inversions and all other stuff is because in, in real world, I mean what 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 uh, what the example will be in real world is you'll have the actual company, mycompany.com, and that company will delegate to different services. You'll not have uh, you know full team one delegate using the, the bar as as a, as a host name. So that just means that like there's there's a common root. Right, which, which yes, is it's a common route but it's that the is, same basic principle. Like I, I would change this example. I don't think this example is the one that we want. To it's adopt. narrow. It's more narrow. Yes, that's, yes. That, uh, that's a too generic. Is that so? Making it too generic makes it difficult to implement. Yeah, there's usually yeah. there's an owner, and then yeah. there are yeah. children. They're, exactly. they're not peers. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I agree. I mean, we can have an example where you have a, a common host name, which is where in this example it holds true, and you have for specific paths. Uh, delegate uh, your routing to specific services, different services. And then as you have sub routes and path matches within those, your virtual service spec keeps on growing. I think currently that is a real problem where if you have a lot of routes for a specific host, I think it can, I, it can get very difficult to manage. That is, I, I agree. But what I'm trying to push here is what you're trying to compress, I mean, what you're trying to push in is the user experience in terms of like, you know, how you're going to match and how you're going to like let things delegate and so on mm -hmm. into one giant wall of YAML, flat at YAML. And it is it, it, into an API that is meant to be like more modular and like as a composable API. Rather than doing that as pushing it down to the lowest start of API, construct a second layer above it where you can, you can create expose a thing to the end users where they can, they can submit their things and you have the logic to like merge and you can kick out things that say hey you have a path match here and you have a regex match here is not allowed and so you do that at the second layer about that actually may keep things right, but, composable. yeah I mean, sure I mean, the, the issue is right now you require people to learn two apis exactly with 80 percent functional overlap well, you could still have it with the same API, right? I mean, you could, as the, the tool that he presents could still take two virtual services and could still basically like you know, have a like hash include a different virtual service, something of that sort. And you can, but, there's a whole bunch of imaginative st the stuff but, that you can do by. Which I mean, will, will security engineer will understand this? I mean, and understand what the implications of, of this hash but, no, but the, the No, but the security engineer is only, only going to look at the final flattened virtual service and he's going to basically and, be able Look at things. Like, I okay. still not understand anything. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, uh, it's no, no. Exactly. Exactly. Sure, I'm correct I that think... ultimately, right? There's a flattened set of routes for a host sure. that can be inspected and tested. So, uh, right, that's different from like. So this this is to solve an authoring problem. This is not to solve know, a, yeah. a validation problem. I know, no, no, no. But so, so Louis, yes, I think there are two things that uh, operator can look at. I think if an operator looks at what they have configured in the smallest unit possible, it makes them easy to understand things. And I, I agree that when it gets lowered to Envoy, you still have a big list of routes, which is difficult to debug, and we don't have a good solution there. Right, no, and, and for, that, we need, for that, actually, we need to provide kind of like standardized testing and validation. I totally can, agree. But I what agree. he was saying is that you, you also create a flattened list from the virtual service itself. Like for the model that you have, if you have a, a layer above like the, the Istio APIs, mm -hmm. that actually like creates a flattened one giant virtual service for every host that says, here are the list of all routes that I map. This is something that machine generated, so there's no chance of errors. The human input things, which is also going to be in the same syntax as virtual service, will be merged by a, a layer above, which actually and then spits it out. Mm -hmm. Then, then like in the security person would actually inspect the final flattened virtual service that your layer is generating, and the end users are actually end user slash the local operator is only going to see his section of the virtual service that he has. And he's just going to be like, you know, right. So that that's the GitOps version in the bottom of the document. Yeah. Yes. Right? I mean, so Sriram, I, I 
understand what you're recommending. Not exactly, right? because the GitHub thing is like you know within the same Git thing. I'm actually like you know, having a version or version of different virtual services, and I need to know I can. I mean, no, it's logically the same thing, right? Something yeah, I mean, in the logically CIs. the same thing, right? I mean, you are trying to load the configuration from multiple sources. You write a merge bot or some bot that will do it, or the Istio control plane can do it, where you get uniformity for everyone. Uh, it, yes or no, it. right? The, the control plane. So the main problem here is there's uncertainty in terms of like you know, there is a there's a bit of thing here where you have to decipher what the user intent is, and uh, I, that right. I mean, for example, if I specify a slash Google and then somebody says slash Google slash one two three, there is an explicit intent here which which with if you do within Istio, they effectively inter not even interpreting, we're just guessing the whole thing and trying to like in you know, a match and like combine. Whereas if you do it at a layer above. Then you can present user so, uh, UX so, tools uh, or Shriram. When you do things with a layer above, you do two things. Either you take away some of the functionality which the layer below provided, or the layer above is the exact same replica of the configuration and the API which is below, because you want to provide all the functionality. So you haven't actually solved the problem. You just pushed it to a merge no, bot that you, every no, user no, have no, to no, write. Thing. You don't have to do a merge bot. You can actually make it interactive. So, by like making the merge board actually ask the user, I I send right, the content here. Either way, Shriram, it's like it's extrinsic to the in, the infrastructure so, itself, right? Yeah. Regardless of how it is implemented, I mean implementation. We can discuss implementation after we agree on requirements. I mean, is the requirement to delegate and to impose some sort of structure and and how much flexibility do we want to allow? So, so, so we, the, we know that there is a requirement to clear. enable partitioned authoring of some names. That's clear for multiple right. reasons. I mean, yes. for security and other reasons. So let's assume we, we, we get that in. And there are many ways to implement it. Uh, that would mean that we delegate host plus prefix for sure. And I maybe agree. something else, maybe some headers. So let's focus on the narrow cases that we can agree on first. Right. I, th I think the the, the 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 tricky actually thing to resolve is whether we want to make this a feature of the stack or a feature of some system that sits on top of the stack. Yeah. So it's that's implementation detail. We can no, no, it's not oh, actually. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's really not. So can I actually roll back a thing and explain what I understood? It is in more like simple terms. Okay. So are we trying to do some sort of hierarchical partitioning here where we have some sort of uh, route rules, right? That apply to the, like almost in the DNS, let's say I go to google.com, I have my top level rules. And then depending on, uh, I can go, let's say to translate, I apply some other rules, but then have a yes. lower, Oh, right. No, it's actually it's not really delegated because they will be all the, in the same order, right? So if it doesn't it match is, is the Google.com, right, it will go to the next layer and no, so but, on, right? But, 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 you see, so the, it's the more problem, like a DNS thing the, for the The issue the is trying to solve is not an infrastructural problem. It's an authoring problem. Yeah. So, so who writes which who gets thing to in who this gets partition? To define. It is. Right. How do you it's manage? Ownership for these resources, Andra. That's the thing yeah. that I'm trying to yeah. manage. And then once you have the right ownership, you can build RBAC on top of it. If you don't exactly. have ownership, RBAC is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. This is Shannon. I, I think we I already understand. Do this I in hope Cloud everybody Foundry. else does. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Shannon. We already do this in Cloud Foundry. Uh, and we I expect would continue to do it at a layer above. We already support ownership of domains and subdomains. We don't support um, ownership of path prefixes for the uh, complexities that have been discussed. Um, you know, another team could uh, start taking some of your traffic unbeknownst to you. Um, and it, it, it sounds like it would be a lot simpler if we could just give Istio a computed flat file and take care of our back ourselves. Yeah, so this this, this, this tension, right, where we have alternate configuration modes Yep. configuration systems that have their own compositional models, their own RBAC models, and, you and, treat, and, and treat virtual services infrastructure, yep. right? Which is basically what, um, versus you know what we might want to happen in Kubernetes, right? Where we're also trying to maybe solve an authoring problem, right? and that's the tension. Yes. But so as far as like short-term steps to proceed, I think Shriram is right in that like a tool to prove this out is a reasonable way to to start to implement this right because like we clearly we don't quite know what we need here so i think that that would be a pretty lightweight way to iterate on ways that we could expose to this and what that new api would look like without actually sure. impacting pilot right 
Uh, well, it's more uh, of an we, interactive tool. Keep that in mind, right? It's, it's a, it should be a completely interactive tool when, like, when it actually looks at these conflicting paths and conflict indexes and so on. It actually presents the question to the user before actually like doing anything. It's not an out of the box asynchronous like admission control tool or anything of that sort. It just it's purely an interactive tool that we can actually we can ship it as part well, of it. Shram, we uh, I, and, you know, we can have a simple UI or a form and so on that just has it, and people I, can disable it if they don't want to, but. It will still solve that problem in some extent, right? Uh, we, we still need, I mean, either Gary or Pilot to, to kind of at least uh, enforce some, I mean, as, as a no, no, but well, so the thing is another concern as well, right? So like, but right now we don't even know what the model might quite be to do the delegation, right? So we can prove that no. out and then we can decompose. Right, so we, we can also see, them. right, do a prototype, right, which exists outside of pilot yeah. that does emerge, yeah. work through the details of the merge, and see if we want to intrinsify that behavior in pilot, right? uh, 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 or, and, and also make a separate decision about whether we want to move that SCI or not. Precisely. We yeah. still have to solve the RBAC problem for domains, regardless. I totally agree with you uh, in the last statement. I, I mean, do you? we should have a separate discussion uh, around how we'll have correct RBAC semantics for domains. Mm -hmm. But, but that, that's actually, if you look at the reverse, I mean, if we start with the RBAC discussion for domains and how we delegate and how we actually reject configurations that we want to reject, it will also simplify because it, if, if, if we have some way to delegate at RBAC level, it will also feed into this, this delegation. Because I you, you actually say, don't agree completely with that because if we keep the same model and people are, and the users are supposed to configure virtual service resources directly, the virtual service resources will keep on becoming larger and larger and difficult to maintain. But do we really think that uh, users yeah. should be configuring virtual services directly? No, um, that was not what we had. Isn't, I mean, isn't Galley going to be the place where users are expressing intent for um, well, Kubernetes but, and Galley is going to do your RBAC and computation? Like most things, right? <laughs> We, we, we have an infrastructural API in virtual service. It does a lot of things, and it, to some degree or other, is usable directly today. Yep. So I do expect lots of users to keep using it. Yep. Now, whether there should be higher level APIs on top, well, we've already seen that happen with Knative, and we're yep. not going to preclude that. There's a separate issue about whether we want to keep making usability enhancements to virtual service yep. right, to support some of the things that Niraj rightly brought up, and Sriram and I have discussed a bit before. I think we need to prototype it a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's... I don't have an objection to maybe doing a prototype like in a branch and doing it directly in pilot. Well, we could do it in the contrib repository. That's why we have it for this thing, right? The right, but, like, I mean, if, if either, either we're going to have pilot do it or we're going to have Istio control do it or we're going to have some other piece of code do it, right? Those are no, really yeah, the No, uh, yeah, this. That, well, this code can I, I mean, where the code rests is different, right? I mean, like we have all the libraries and validation stuff in Pilot, but this thing is gonna have. If you're gonna prototype the merging and so on, there has to be some form of a database, and whether we can use the same HCRDs or modify and write and so on, we could just keep that separate and then bring it in, which is a much more easier path, faster to iterate rather than keeping. Well, let's, let's let's say for sake of argument, we assume GitOps, right? So there's a file system with all your kube config in it, right? It's just the directory structure. Right, which has all the namespaces mapped. Right, so there's a directory per namespace, and all the resources belonging to namespace belong in YAML files in those directories. Right. Hmm. So yeah, in I, that case, you're right. So in that case, then you could use Istio CTL as a, a experimental mode where you can actually try to do the merge and spit it out, and somebody could actually like you know inspect it and or yeah, that's probably. Yeah, I mean that was always the plan, right? Or that was like what that was always what I imagined this you know, control like. Right. It's, it's certainly as a reasonable next step that seems like a perfectly valid thing to do. Yeah. And now how do we do that by like we have to design some convention for it. And and it will be good to try different approaches. I mean, what this is one approach, but also to see how it feels to 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 go with with just uh, you know host names only delegation and host name plus path only if it's easier to understand for users because Right. That's why I wanted to gonna, uh, the how are we exactly. going to release this to the users, like all the var variants? Well, they, are, they can use the tools at any time. Too. It's, we, it's, it's already it. confusing when you have like to 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 have oh. to choose between two simple things. We cannot like just give them everything and say try mm -hmm. all these and let me know which one suits you best. Well, let's say Istio control apply virtual service .yaml, yeah. and it processes all the delegation. Yeah. Yep. And we say it's experimental. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's a, that's a great start. I mean, we can 
uh, figure out if there are some hairy corners which we haven't thought of and uh, uh, see if from the usability point of view what makes sense to yeah but Sorry, I would still appreciate if 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 we also explore the, the virtual host. I mean, uh, the, 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 the just just to have some way to specify this namespace is only allowed to configure this this. Uh, virtual oh yeah, host. we have to do that. We have yes. to do that no matter what. And if we do that again, we need to see how it ties into 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 this delegation because they are related. Yes. We cannot yeah. So we need a separate proposal for that. Yes. We have to have it. Uh, I don't know, Niraj, if you want to volunteer for that or not, but uh, that's certainly. Uh, there's lots of stuff to do with that. <laughs> yes, we have thought about it a bit. Uh, I need to make sure I have the bandwidth in this month or something to actually okay. work on it. So give me some time. I can come back on it. Because okay. I, I know the Kubernetes community itself is also going to care about this because they have the same freaking problem. I recall seeing a demo uh, in a session at Next on this. Somebody had wrote a cube control pro uh, plugin that took file-based uh, structure and did the computation and applied it all. Yes. So Google has a product, uh, the Kubernetes uh, configuration, I forgot what the hell the name of it is, which is basically a, a kind of automation around this GitOps principle that does policy composition and other types of things. Uh, and I'll have the guy who worked on that help to review whatever we, we do around the, the RBAC stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can also talk about how the composition or delegation might work. But this composition is very domain specific, um, but we can make sure at least we are aligned in convention. Uh, I'll send out a link to that, the demo and the docs for that tool. I was going to mention that earlier because they have thought through a lot of these types of issues in in a generic sense, uh, but obviously we have domain specific issues here. Yes, that will be great. And uh, I mean, we have discussed on this a lot, but please free to add your comments in the docs so I can uh, keep. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely. I have just. It's been busy. <laughs> yes, I, I understand. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, so the main comment uh, would be that uh, I guess the delegation is not a peer thing. It's more of a hierarchical nature, right? But it's yeah, going it's it's to uh, have to be a DAG. It, will need it, to be. it has to be a DAG, yes. And actually, there was another name which we thought which might be better is forwarding. That's what traditionally in load balancers mm -hmm. you see when mm -hmm. one virtual yes. service yeah. forwards to the other. Right. We can yeah. use that term too if that's better. Delegation yeah. is more for when you have authorship and ownership. It makes sense that an author of a virtual service wants to delegate to another virtual service author. Right. That, um, yeah. I mean, the, the other mm -hmm. quirk we're going to have here is in some cases, like a virtual service may be bound to a gateway. Mm -hmm. And only to the gateway, and it might not be the same gateway that the other virtual service that. <laughs> like, Life, yeah. Right. So this it gets this, complicated very fast. Well, I think right, the so things is, that get delegated down can't bind to gateways. Like yeah. I, I yes. don't think so, so, we got the semantics there. So there are a few things that I have mentioned in the doc. When you guys get a chance, please read about these semantics. Yeah. Like it, for the thing that just wants to be delegated to, we can even skip the hosts if we want because the hosts mm -hmm. of those are currently ignored. These are just for composition. The top level parent is the one which gets to decide what the host name is. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I thought we would also do this forwarding based on the host. Like uh, the, the top level maybe. would be, I don't know, maybe team one, something. Well, you might want the host to be in agreement, even though the, the, the initial yeah. host wild declaration had a wild card in it. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. And also, like it's easier <laughs> to reason about things if you see what the host relates to, even if the traffic that gets there only has that host. Right? Yeah. When you like display it. It's... Mm -hmm. and, by the way, there are also HTTP level concerns. I mean, if you if the original host in the request is uh, food team one, are we going to forward with the original host, or are we going to forward with uh, with the altered host? With the, I mean, we'll do what exactly what the virtual service says. If they want to rewrite the host, we have that in the Absolutely. virtual service, yeah. and so, you can put in the rewrite. Yeah, I think if you think of it in the sense that there are actual reverse proxies which are sitting between them, and you think about traffic flowing through them, I think we can go. We can simplify the how the resolution will work by yeah. actually mimicking the traffic. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the problem is we can't do that at runtime, right? Because it gets too expensive. Yeah. Have, I agree. Like, and that's control. why the control plane should be resolving yeah. it and making the set of reverse proxies as client proxies, which yeah. are resolved to config, which is uh, enforced at the client level. Yeah. But I do, I do think that that's roughly the right mental model to think about this with. 
book. Okay, anything more on this topic? We went way like above <laughs> the limit, I imagine, but that is good because it was a very good discussion. So anybody wants to add something like super important about this? I have a follow-up question. Are we thinking only so far in the context of HTTP? No. Uh, because no, really. uh, TCP will get even more uh, port allocation and, uh, yeah, and, ports. and quotas gets really complex. We've done this in Cloud yeah. Foundry. Uh, we allow uh, domains to be associated with one deployment of gateway routers or another, uh, and um, and the the cardinality of of pools, uh, well, I guess in Kubernetes land, um, clusters and those routers, and the allocation of ports um, gets really fun. So uh, I only see HTTP here, but it would be interesting uh, as as the the community thinks about yeah. I mean, more about this. TCP IP is a hierarchical namespace too. Kind of. Kind of. No, well, kind, as yeah. a namespace, it's definitely yeah. hierarchical. Combined with SNI, it's also very hierarchical, yes. yes. So, uh, uh, so it, it can be done. Ports are orthogonal, which makes things a little funny. But ports are very yeah. important yes, because of, of the stateful sets, which are, we still need to resolve at some point. Yes, they are yes. back around port ranges. That it's yep. complex. It's yep. really interesting and complex. I totally agree. But we need to do it. I mean, port at least for stateful. Uh, I mean, having a dedicated port for stateful sets, I think it's it's uh, pretty urgent. It's, it's kind of the only viable solution in short term. And for what it's worth, uh, <coughs> most customers we've talked to say that they're the clients of their uh, workloads that support non HTTP protocols don't support SNI. That's. Uh... Okay, because we have a sidecar that can support SNI and, and can inject SNI. So that's kind of the plan for right. since we are adding a mutual, mutual TLS, mutual TLS also adds SNI. Yeah, so SNI is an issue at the edge for non yeah, HTTP it's workloads. Yeah. But within the mesh, SNI is fine. If we yeah. have this. Because, because we're we talking about at the edge. Yeah, at the edge, edge is yeah, At uh -huh. the edge, dedicated port is kind of the only option as far as I know. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really. Has anybody thought about. Uh, um, dedicated VIPs and spinning up routers on demand, and how to avoid making a change to a load balancer in that case. Well, so VIPs, VIPs work today. The only problem is that there's no DNS plugin for your application to resolve a host name into the VIP. No, no, I want to avoid at all costs DNS resolving to more than one IP. Yep, I mean, but that's fundamentally if applications are trying to address a VIP via host name, there must be DNS that resolves that name. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, yeah, DNS would be no limited around that. Oh, I'm and just thinking about use to... horizontal scalability of dedicated VIPs. Are you, are you more interested at the edge or in the mesh? I'm only thinking about the edge. OK, so at some point, and, and this is, again, a gap, we need to think about how gateways declare their bindings to VIPs. Yep, because that's so and, well. We find and how the right. DNS right, is pro provisioned based on that. One way or the other. Yeah. Okay, we have to get to the next topic. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> like I see there was a change here. So, uh, Rafael, yeah, I switched but, it um, because, uh, like, you know, we could discuss the endpoints thing, but he, they had asked for this thing to be discussed. So I thought we could. Okay, discuss. sure. Uh, so go ahead, please, Rafael. Yeah, hi. Good hi. afternoon. Yeah, so I wanted to propose an approach to remove the need of having the init. Um, yeah, init container in the pod, in the Istio pod. Um, I'm not sure if I can, I have a presentation, but I'm not sure I, how I can share it. Uh, so I can summarize button. for you if, if that helps, Rafael. I think, um, let me see, okay, I think I found a way. Yeah, there is a button and you just present. Yeah, right. where's, uh, are you on Istio networking meeting or? No, yeah, we see. Can you see? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the problem, uh, like I said, um, the Istio init the container needs uh, to be privileged or at least to have root and net admin uh, capability. Just net admin. Uh, sorry? Just net admin, not root. OK, net admin. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still a lot uh, because it, it can obviously, with that, it can join the mesh, but it can also, a pod can also leave the mesh, can also modify the Kubernetes SDN setup and uh, steal the IPs of the of the node of, or, or the other pods. So um, so this is just an init container, right? Which is not even going to contain any application. I mean, unless you write your own init containers and so on, this is just going to, it's transient, it runs, and then it is gone. 
and right. this is not something that is running like while your application is running or like so on right i do agree that the Correct. problem is that you're giving developers the ability to run privileged pods which is something that some uh, like you know deployments just don't like but as such these after in terms of security hole and so on this is like the thing is set up once before any yeah, application let me, let me... runs let me get into a little bit deeper in that, into that, because I, I understand that this is the point of view of the uh, maybe of the Easter community. But let me add to the let me add another piece of information. So there is an upcoming feature in in Kubernetes which is called Pod Security Policy, which yeah. will allow to specify what a pod can do. It's a certain it's a set of a profile <coughs> for the permissions that you give to the pod processes, and. Uh, it's now in beta, but this is something that um, if you don't activate it, anyone can create a privileged pod. And that's that's basically how Istio works, how they, how they need to container works. In, in OpenShift, so I'm, I work for Red Hat, so I've been using OpenShift, obviously. In OpenShift, this feature has always existed as this security contest constraint, SEC. And as you probably know, in OpenShift, Istio doesn't work by default because the default SEC does not allow you to create privileged pods. And so you have to, uh, to you have to add this line to your namespace. You have to run this command on your namespace to basically give the default <laughs> service account privilege uh, SEC. Therefore, the default service account can create privileged pods. This is like giving your developers root access to the to the nodes. Well, it's so, not giving good access to the node. I mean, I suppose the containers are still contained. It's only for the pod. But so, yeah, but then no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. That once you do that, your developer can ask for privilege access for the containers that are in the pod, right? So, well, 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 well the only requirement we, we we are not requiring that the containers have privileged access. That, that would be crazy. I guess. No, so you, you, but but you cannot stop it. That's so so let's say this is the case, right? Then the solution that you're proposing, right? When I was looking at the solution that you proposed, like so even if we assume for the moment for sake of argument that this is uh, this is actually the this is actually an issue, then the solution that you had proposed, right, which was to actually uh, use the controllers to actually do this. I mean that would be in the, probably in the next slide, I guess. Yeah. So let me so. Yeah, so my, my prediction is as soon as other Kubernetes distribution will pick up on the pod security policy and will create a default security policies that don't allow pods to be privileged and, and therefore to have privileged containers inside of them, this problem will become apparent also to the you know, more broader issue community. Okay, so I have two, 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 two pieces of data that I want to add here. I don't know if you are aware of them. Uh, mm -hmm. One is that uh, we also support T proxy interception, which is more scalable than redirect. Mm -hmm. And the only way T proxy works is that if, if the sidecar itself has net admin privileges, because yeah. T proxy requires you a system calls that requires net admin. So yeah, we already, it's not a problem only for the init container, it's also a problem for the sidecar. It's not privileged, it's not root, it's just net admin. Uh, it's still and a without, very powerful capability. And but... without kernel changes. And, and also, I want to add that once Envoy supports UDP, uh, T proxy is kind of the only way that works with UDP to capture UDP. So that's why T proxy is important. We'll okay. not be able to support UDP capture unless we support uh, T proxy. Okay. I don't have a solution for that. I have <laughs> no. a only for the intercept, uh, you know, the other way of intercepting. Why is that? Yeah, so let's, uh, let's give her a chance to Rafael yeah. to go yeah. solve Sorry. the slides yeah, let's, because let's we have limited it. time. Unfortunately, yeah. I didn't realize this is such a okay, big let's, topic. Let's. So the proposed solution is to uh, take away that piece of code from the init container and run it somewhere else uh, and to run it in a demo set. So a demo set is a set of pods that run in each node. The life cycle of this demo set is to check for new pods and then decide whether the pods belong to the mesh. If it belongs to the mesh and it's not initialized, run the, those IP tables commands and then um, and then annotate the pod as initialized. Uh, so can, can this uh, demo set uh, start new, pods, new containers in the pod? What kind of permissions do we have in the demo set? The demo set is privileged. 
but you it's not going to start. You can't start you new things in the pod, right? It's not, other words, it's not going to start. So it's not going to start uh, anything in the pod. It's just going to enter the pod namespace, in particular, the, the network yeah. namespace. So once you are in the network namespace, you can run those IP table That's commands. That's good enough. That's right, but enough. So here's the problem, though, right? So until the daemon set is activated, that pod can receive traffic from anybody. It can also send traffic to anybody. So and no, because it's not initialized. It, it it can have an initialized that just, that just waits. So we, we can prevent that. Well, right, yeah. The initializer blocking is yeah. there. Uh, so the yeah, which initializer is this? Right. Is, is, is that is like is that a guarantee that the pod will not receive any traffic or send any traffic until yes. we set that initializer thing to true? Yes. Well, right now I don't have that split synchronization because we, just because we haven't developed, I think it it's possible to create that. Well, if you have an init container that prevents the application container from starting until the init container is initialized, right, then you can just put that. The init container here. You, the init container is running on a daemon. No, no, you still have the init container to check. But doing nothing, basically. Right, you're basically asking the daemon set, provision me, please. Right. Ah, I see. OK. Ah, OK. So then the init container could actually check for a unit domain socket. Right now. Yeah, maybe you could check internally the IP table. I don't know if you need any specific permission to just inquire IP just table, but check the Unix domain check, socket, right? Uh, you know, yeah, it, we it mark the pods. Something. Yeah, there is some check. We mark the pods as uh, with an annotation to say that they are initialized. Check. So you could check. So are you sure that that the, uh, the, that it is not possible to modify the pod or to to run stuff in the pod as with with uh specific image, I mean, like we do the sidecar injector, because that will that will solve the problem of the proxy and, and uh, having, uh, maybe we can do some other thing. Okay, yeah. anyway. So, so now the point is, in if you if you, if you you run something in the pod, you, you will inherit the SEC of that pod, which, yeah. which if you have said you don't want to run a privileged, pod, a privileged code, then you can't. Yeah. Um, so, but another another privileged pod can enter the the namespace or namespaces, depending what you need to do, and modify stuff. But then it's probably it's going to exit, you know, terminate that process, yeah. that it, and just you know, yeah, and and leave the pod alone. That's good. So you could actually also set up a T proxy this way as well, right? So I don't think this. If, if T well, proxy, if T proxy is a different issue, no, it's not a setup. It's 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 a it's, system call. Yeah, a system call yeah. has to make the IP transparent call to see the. To get remote like, IP address, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why. Yeah. If, yeah. if it's a system call, uh, well, yeah, we have yeah. to see what it is exactly. I, I need, would need to take a look, and then I could answer that question. Okay. Uh, so the other side of this is: uh, Does BPF remove the requirement for NetAdmin? No, no. It's, it's the same, right? It's, okay. it's just a different way of doing the same thing. So it still requires the same. Gotcha. But please check. I mean, if you are granting privilege to the to the Istio, that's really bad. I mean, from security point of view. I mean, you you, you should only have NetAdmin and nothing else. I mean, giving full privilege is huge. Well, I mean, to to it's, Chris's point, if you look at the we we do mark pods as privilege today. He linked the PR. Because chat. that was for the, the OpenShift folks, they're not for us. We, we marked it as privilege because it was not working in OpenShift. That's why we had yeah. to add that as well. Um, as such, for us, we just only need the NetAdmin. We don't need privileged. So yeah. I can add. I can add on that. Uh, by the way, NetAdmin is still too powerful for I think for most organization. But the the reason why for OpenShift it still doesn't work it's because, say Linux, and I I cannot I don't know why exactly, but say Linux is in the way there. So the only way to work around that is to have uh, uh, privileged pods. Yeah, uh, we we definitely need to 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 reduce this in general. I mean, it's not. Uh... So I mean, I, so, I, I, so I, 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 I thought the proposal principle seems workable. Uh, proposal is good. I'm happy no. with this. I mean, don't, I'm not saying no, but uh, we need to think about the T proxy and we need to think yes. about uh, other things. Yeah. Let's hear yeah. from Lynn, I think. Yeah, I saw that we took uh, a lot of effort to remove privilege to true to both the init container and the proxy in the community. Mm. Right, but we're still going down to net admin, and I think the stipulation. Yeah, we still is have net admin. Net, net admin is still too powerful. Well, but it's still not as powerful as privilege or as sure, like so. <laughs> right, we're, right. We're at least you don't. Have it's always going to be an arms race getting and, down to and, the minimum and, set of privileges. And to be clear, you are not getting net admin on the entire node. You get net admin only on the pod. So you can modify the IP address of the pod, but you cannot modify anything outside of the pod. But net, in my understanding, net admin allows you to modify the network namespace. 
So basically, you can start, you can enter the network space of other pods or of the network. Okay, um, you can, uh, you can re uh, reconfigure the network. Sure, nobody can double check. Uh, can I have okay, a minute? Somebody is saying something. Uh, so Frederick is saying, uh, oh, how do I uh, Can you have a minute for the performance uh, scalability? Uh, we still want to. Yeah, yeah just let's, let's see. Somebody said here, just to be clear. Okay. Uh, you can spin a new, more privileged container and connect it to a net, uh, network namespace of your choice. So okay. that's, yeah, that's possible. Sorry, on, on, on scalability issue, I want to quickly uh, talk about the fact uh, we, we did the load test, we did scalability test, and some customer users reported the same problem. Uh, 1,000 services or 2,000 endpoints, and we start having problems. And we discussed, I mean, I discussed with Sriram before, and, and we know a quick fix to improve that by um, caching the virtual service and the other entries used in, um, in config generation. And I think we are discussing cutting a 101 release in two, three weeks with uh, just this fix to get the scalability to better numbers. Uh, if there are concerns or <laughs> uh, issues, please let us know. So that will be off the release one zero. Well, out of one zero, with, with only scalability points. fixes to address this, uh, this, uh, this number. Which is what we just start doing the list stuff. I guess. Yeah, just stop doing the list and cache the results in in, in the push context and and uh, reuse that object because uh, the, we identify the cause yeah. is a YAML to proto conversion. We know how to solve it. It's oh, just okay. you know. Is not a huge problem, but again, it'll require 101 cut and uh, some work in the 10 branch. Yeah, okay. okay. That's all I have to say. Okay, okay, good. So we still have two more minutes because we haven't wrapped up on. Well, so we, we don't have a conclusion, actually. Yeah, so, so what we're going to do, uh, we're, we're going to, like, I'm going to go talk to the security folks on the Kubernetes team yeah. about their plans for reducing privilege yeah. and get them to review the proposal. Yeah. Um, like, so I'm going to talk to people like Maya, uh, even though she's at DEF CON. So we, I'll, I'll, we'll get some review, because we need to go through a round of review with this. Like I, it is an area that needs some more focus, and we need a holistic proposal that enterprises are going to accept. You know, I'm not sure that they, there, there are enterprises that are already willing to do what we've done today. Yeah. So it's, it's not clear that it's, but there are certainly classes of enterprises that will want the absolute, absolute least exposure. Yes. And we'll have to try and find ways to give it to them. And, and, and there are other benefits of having the, the, the pod initializer. And, and I mean, I, I can see many other. I mean, it simplifies the deployment. It simplifies a lot of things. Um, you mean the pod network controller, the, 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 the current so proposal. It would be wonderful to see a prototype and to have some things there, that there is already. There is so already. there is code in GitHub, which so, is, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, like, I don't see why you can add it to home. You can like, already run it. And it's, so if, yeah. Is there a reason to make it? Is there a reason we can't add it, right? I mean, it still does not remove the net admin stuff. It still requires net admin. And the, this thing is effectively removing the entire init container, which is actually nice. And I was I would even go as far as saying that if this works and this is clean and neat, then we could offer it as an option in the 101. And we simply tell people. Oh, like, that's one, 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 one. No, one dot one, sure. One, one, I mean, one is as an best, option best. where somebody goes and tries it themselves, right? Yes. Not like if a, you want to pull down the the current Helm charts and deploy it, that's like, like Louis wants to discuss uh, NPS. With, uh, this problem. Yeah, well, the, there is already a GitHub, so the question is mm. how, uh, right? PRs uh, to yeah. get it into Istio. One, into one Istio, and, uh, yeah, exactly. At least so we can try it and see how we can we can yeah. if we yeah, can work around the PR now because it's like it certainly doesn't like hurt. Yeah, and the other thing I want to make sure that we are of this thing, right? We we created a separate repo, okay? Yeah, but I mean, you could start this to be like merged slowly by like applying. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want it, I can start thinking about a smaller PR. So like while the discussion is going on on the other things, we could. I mean, some of the con the constructs here are still helpful. But I mean, the other things to consider here, logically, if Envoy is doing all the routing for all the pods, you don't need IP tables programming for Kubernetes at all, because hmm. you don't have to do FIP. Right, so you could actually eliminate that. You still need it for services. No. Nope. Well, no, you don't need it for sure. That's no, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. You do that, that but um, do you need an IP table to capture the traffic? That, that's so only at the node level, right? That's theoretically, right? You're just saying all traffic from a pod goes back into the local envoy and it does all the routing, right? Which is really all that the IP, the node level IP tables were doing anyway. So I mean, but then we are also we could I mean we also have parameterizing it a little bit by looking at the configuration, the sidecar injectors, looking at some inbound ports and so on, and trying to like emit the 
right but, set of ip table stuff if that is not that then yes you're right i mean i can well, see we're we're we, we, doing t proxy right that kind of doesn't matter we we, so we, we can work around into for the inbound we can, we can work around uh, and that will basically have void per node right and then which is not a bad no, idea no 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 still no, only no. the pod oh the still pod. the pod yeah. oh, okay cool, 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 right, we don't pod. want to violate the trust domain yeah yeah cuz per yeah per node has different because it sets up the network namespaces or and you remove all kubernetes i was clearly well, hard to talk to them you can make oh, work if they want to yeah no or environment yeah, uh, and then the other thing is people could offer variations of this like if cilium wanted to provide their own ebpf version of this instead yeah. of ip tables or or we did right the way you would do the upgrade is roll out well oh upgrade have, is different yeah upgrade is going to be an interesting challenge well, no, we this wait. this one will work, right? This upgrade is just a node a node level thing for every new pod that comes up. It's gonna set up the IP table stuff. Right, but let's say you're updating the daemon set, right? And let's say you're switching from IP tables to eBPF. Well, you'd have that's to deploy a version that could do both, right? But that's, that's all about like us. We will do a node rollout. It's all right. <laughs> So I, if you yeah. have topics to discuss, I think we can discuss next uh, week. Absolutely, uh, actually, that's a very good idea. You know, like to just to book it, especially if it's burning, it can be like it doesn't have to wait so the two can weeks. We, can we get a doc going in the community drive? Just maybe take what you already have in your presentation and just dump it into a doc and put it in the community drive so we can start just piling on it and add some, not necessarily solutions, but add options in there. And then uh, I can get it reviewed internally by some folks who are knowledgeable in this space too. Okay, we'll do. All right. I may ask so, uh, where the community drive is, but uh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll find okay. a way. To well, I'll just send it to Wiki will also Wiki. work for something because community is getting very hard to, to share and to do things. Oh, I know it's like, a pain in the ass, but it's, it's what we have right now. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Thanks, everybody, and sorry for keeping you late. No, it was great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Thanks. Talk about. Yeah, exactly. Bye. See you in two Bye. weeks. All right, thanks. Bye.